Welcome into this week's weather hangout. Great to see you if you're watching us on WTL 11 plus or on YouTube. We appreciate you being long each and every week and we've got the squad, so to speak, <laughs> assembled and ready to go, which means this is going to be a jam packed episode. Uh, we'll kick it off with meteorologist Matt Willoughby. Matt, lots to talk about this week. What do we got on tap? Yeah, so we got some good, really, really good videos out there. And then, uh, of course, we're talking about um, mental health and weather. So something that doesn't necessarily mix all the time, but we'll be kind of breaking it down how it kind of affects you through each season. And yeah, John, it's super important to talk about both the mental side of things and the physical component right. to how the weather affects us uh, for many of us. And I speak for myself and probably all of us spring allergies really oh, flaring up, goodness. whether it's, you know, the watery yeah. eyes, the runny nose, the sniffles. <laughs> You name it, yeah. all of those <laughs> symptoms and more. It seems like it's been a bad allergy season so far. We're going to explain why that may be the case and also what you can expect going forward and what sort of allergens are in the air and aggravating those allergies. Yes. And Diane, this is the time of the year we start thinking about Lake Erie, recreation, right. fun we out on get Lake. Out there. We want to get out and enjoy it, yeah. but there's also a little science behind what we're going to be talking about with Lake Erie as well. Exactly. There's always something in the summer that we're all watching, the bloom. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we're going to have a kind of a preview looking ahead to that season kind of what we're expecting where we have been so we're gonna make sure everybody's ready of course to have some fun but also then be safe on the water i can't believe we're just racing through the month of may a yes. lot of kids could be talking summer vacation mm -hmm. and uh, uh, out of school coming up here very soon so uh, lots to talk about lots to unpack yeah it's coming up real quick honestly may has flown by already we're already in the middle part of may mm -hmm. uh, and we're getting closer and closer to meteorological summer can you believe it yeah it's and memorial day is coming the unofficial start to summer Ooh, and a there little bit go. of a hint towards some heat that's going to be building yeah. into next week as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, first thing up that we have for you, uh, Matt, why don't you take us through what we're looking at with uh, this rare combination? Yeah, a rare combination of lightning and rainbows dazzled onlookers as storms roll through north uh, over north Salt Lake City uh, and eventually into Utah on Sunday evening. This footage uh, from Cal uh, captures two bolts of lightning, one at the start in the video and then another at the end. Oh, there it is. Uh, wow, you don't Beautiful. necessarily see that every day uh, appearing and intersect uh, with the rainbow uh, just south of Salt Lake City. Wow, is there still a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Is there <laughs> lightning there? Or two, Might be a right? Christy, two, yeah. Pot should be two pots of gold. Yeah, that is certainly a rare occurrence. You know, we often see the rainbow in the calm after the storm, but to see it with active lightning strikes as well. Wow, pretty neat video. Yeah, just getting that sun angle and the angle with the storm. It's not often you get to see that. I don't think I've ever seen it I besides this it. video. Not in person. I yeah. love it. All right, next up here, uh, if you're a space enthusiast, uh, just this past Sunday, May 14th, uh, the Falcon 9 launched 56 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit from uh, the uh, Space Launch Compact Complex 40. Uh, this was down around Cape Canaveral. I would just love to see a rocket blast off. Is that in, on anyone's like bucket list? Oh yeah, mine, definitely mine. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Matt was really fast to I say was, that. Yeah, <laughs> he's been thinking about this. And right. to hear the sounds and all, yeah, just. I just, I, I wanna feel the ground shake. Yes. Beneath That'd my be feet. a little scary. All right, <laughs> this was the 11th launch for the Falcon 9, so very cool to see that. Yes, and of course, we also have uh, Cyclone Macha, which made landfall on Sunday. You're going to see that there in Asia. The cyclone made landfall around 1.30 p.m. local time. Several villages uh, were destroyed, sadly, because those wind speeds were up to 130 miles per hour. So, of course, cyclones there, you're going to find those if they are west of the uh, international dateline. Of course, they're be cyclones. We have hurricanes here. 130 miles an hour. That is no joke. And we got one more video for you. A young baseball catcher was caught in a dust devil. Oh my oh, goodness. It whipped up behind home plate during a children's Look game in Jacksonville, Florida. Wow. Was it a ball or a strike? The young couldn't see. <laughs> it was a really neat video there capturing the footage and it surrounded the seven year old boy before an adult pulled him out from the whirlwind. Uh -huh. You know, even though they're scary looking, generally speaking, they're not overly detrimental and he was able to get safely removed from the winds there. Certainly a sight to behold, especially right at home plate there. Did the ump call him safe at home? I would hope so after that situation. Safe from the dust devil. I'm pretty yeah. sure he just got all caught up in that. Wow. How do you even see where you're at when you're just in golf? That was with definitely all that a curveball. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like what a truly a curveball. I'm waiting for the Tasmanian devil to show up somewhere oh, on there. And, and just tell me, one of their mascots was the Tasmanian devil, perhaps. It had to have been. <laughs> you don't see that every day, and especially the context of that on a baseball diamond. Certainly unusual, but those Very little cool. micro vortices in the atmosphere with the spinning around, it's. A lot of people ask you, what's the difference between a land spot such as that and a tornado? Well, the circulation 
circulation is entirely different for a land spot like that. It actually begins closer to the surface and extends upward, mm -hmm. whereas a tornado comes from the base of a cloud right. and extends oh, down, wow. eventually making contact yeah. to the ground. Mm -hmm. The more you know about that one, and we appreciate you being along with us on this weekly weather hangout. Uh, stick around. We've got much more coming up right after this quick break. goes to show that folks are still susceptible to allergies in all parts of the country, whether that's right here in the Midwest or even in the desert Southwest, where we still see those allergies ramp up this time of year. We're keeping a close eye on pollen count and some of the allergens that may be aggravating you. We've really gotten off to an early start to the allergy season, and right now the main culprits are mulberry, oak, and ash. Those three are the biggest that are aggravating the allergies. Now this time of year, tree pollen is through the roof, and that level is expected to remain exceptionally high through the weekend and beyond. Ragweed levels are very much on the lower side and mold is something that can occur year round and grow on the soil as well as on dead leaves and such. And that's also on the lower end of the spectrum. That's not inherently caused by spring allergies, but it is low. It's mainly tree pollen that is the biggest culprit this time of year. Let's keep an eye on the allergy forecast as we look towards the weekend and beyond. Sadly, it is expected to remain medium to even high through the next week. Saturday, we are going to see an uptick in the allergies. That is when we're expected to reach high levels and into next week we are going to stay medium high through high. In other words, those allergies not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So make sure you're consulting with your doctor regarding taking an allergy medicine as needed to keep those allergies at bay. Tree pollen is one of the biggest culprits this time of year, and we saw an exceptionally early start this spring. It was even in the start of May and late April that we started to see tree pollen come to life. Part of that had to do with our mild winter, and part of that simply has to do with how mild it has been so far this May. And coming up in this week's edition of the Climate Friday newsletter, I'll explain how tree pollen could be a little bit more of a problem than it was decades ago in the past, and part of that may have to do with our warming climate. This week, we will continue to see high levels of that tree pollen. Now, tree pollen is something that is at its peak right now. I want to show you mid to late May. We are just seeing the start of the grass pollen season. Grass pollen typically peaks in the summertime. We're talking June and July, and then ragweed becomes a little bit more commonplace during the latter half of summer and into autumn as we head towards September. Right now, we are squeezed between that tree pollen and grass pollen season and the combination of those two allergens for May and even into June will continue to be an issue for the coming month. So how exactly do we measure pollen levels and allergy levels? One of the devices that does that is called a rotor rod and essentially what this is is it's a volumetric measure that has a sticky coating on one side and that allows the pollen particles to stick to it as it spins around. When you look at it under a microscope you can actually identify the concentration or the volume of pollen and that gives you an idea for how much is in the air. If there's a higher concentration of pollen that indicates that the allergies may be a little bit worse. And if the concentration that's detected by this device is on the lower end of the spectrum, then thankfully the allergies are a little bit better. So some devices like this can be used to measure pollen. And the higher the density of those pollen particles, the worse the allergies may be. The WTOL 11 weather team will continue to keep you updated as we bear through allergy season together. Not expected to go anywhere for the next week or so, but hopefully there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Now, as we look towards the latter half of spring, and the start of summer eventually. We also have our eyes on Lake Erie as well. And Diane Phillips will have more on what we can expect with the lake. That's exactly right, John. We're all wanting to get out and about now that the weather is warming up and one of those places that you may want to hang out is Lake Erie. Well, of course, we are always keeping our eyes peeled as far as the algal bloom, and we already have that forecast for 2023. So we are forecasting this year to see our bloom around a three up towards a six. So what does that actually mean? Well, when we look back at the last five years, you can see we're kind of right on track with where we have been. So the last couple of summers when you've been out on Lake Erie working also with those blooms, 
You're going to find last year we were up to a seven, so we are forecasting this year to come in just a tad lower than that, but we could be a little more in line with last year or even into 2021. But actually in 2020, nothing to do with the pandemic. It's more weather related, but you'll actually see that we had a lower year. So we're going to be looking at comparable years just within this decade for what we're forecasting in 2023. Of course, we really bopped up there in 2019 where we were up to an eight. But even back in 2015, of course, when we were really being mindful of that bloom, well, that was even higher yet than an eight. So we're again going to be looking between about a three to a six as far as that bloom. Now, when we look ahead, though, at what is well causing some of that runoff, you're actually going to find some conditions that are allowing us to see well that runoff be a little bit higher. So one of that is going to be in March. We had above average load going into Lake Erie. Of course, that's going to be that run off. But then in April, we had the opposite effect. You're going to find that we were looking at then in April, we were below average. So as far as those below average conditions, you are going to find that while well, we kind of evened out between March and April. And the reason for that is because these are both the runoff and that load going into Lake Erie. That's going to be based off of that precipitation. So that precipitation, of course, is going to be coming in the forms of rainfall. And also, of course, thankfully, we don't have snow, but mainly in rain and those amounts. So as we advance forward and kind of go and look back at the data, you're going to be finding that in March we were 1.2 inches above average as far as our rain totals for the month. Then in April we were an inch even over an inch and a quarter below in April. So of course that aligns with exactly what we were looking at as far as that runoff and that load for both months. Of course we'll continue to keep an eye here in May as far as that runoff. Of course watching in the forecast of those rain chances that'll determine determine what we have here in the spring and then even going into the summer as far as those summer storms bringing quite a bit of water in such a short period of time. So of course we'll have updates here on the WTOL 11 weather hangout and also on that WTOL 11 weather app. Of course we still have more to come and how well weather and mental health go together. So make sure you don't miss that. We're going to take a quick break with a weather fun fact. We are getting closer to meteorological summer, but before that, you may want to think about this. So the mental health and weather with the constant changes in weather week to week, it may seem like there's never enough time to enjoy the nice, quiet weather. The spring season and severe weather season comes with a hurry. And in just a few seconds, I'll be breaking down how this could take a toll on your mental health. Check it out. Warmer temperatures and flowers. And in summer, you may want to just let loose, but for some, the months ahead can be the most stressful time of the year. Typically, um, when we think about anxiety and weather, we think about the spring and the summer when we see um, more um, thunderstorms and lightning storms uh, and the risk of tornadoes, at least in our area. And we typically see that in the form of specific phobias. Weather tends to repeat itself if there's an active pattern in our area. This could really bring anxiety levels to an all time high. But what happens if the phobia of stormy weather gets even worse? They may call off work or not go to school. Uh, they might um, want to stay in or again, looking for reassurance, constantly checking their, their phone, their apps. Um, they have multiple apps. During the spring, storms and seasonal allergies can almost act as a one two punch if both seasons are rather active. The anxiety uh, can be related to, um, to allergies. Right. And so we can see anxiety go up and uh, what is a phobia, but a type of anxiety disorder. So there is some uh, suggestion that allergies can play a part, that that inflammation 
uh, does impact the way that the brain responds and um, can cause anxiety to actually go up. Experts say that anxiety for both storms and seasonal allergies is very treatable. But if nothing is done, storm phobia and allergy anxiety could worsen very quickly if there's an active pattern. So seek help soon before it arrives. Reporting in Toledo, I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby for WTOL 11. How about that, that short 30 second uh, period, about uh, 3,000 lightning strikes sure. that just occurred. Yeah, <laughs> certainly a lot, that. certainly didn't occur here. <laughs> we haven't gotten thunderstorms too often lately. It's been nice and sunny overall. And really severe weather free for the past four weeks or so. We haven't had any hint of storms in the outlook, guys, over the next uh, seven to ten days. Uh, skating right up to Memorial Day weekend looking fairly quiet, isn't yep. it? And also it's turning warm, so I'm happy to see that. Yep. I know I'm not the only one because people are going to want to be opening pools. We're even thinking about that yet. <laughs> I yeah. can tell Diana is. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm thinking about <laughs> you know, spring season. <laughs> Mother Nature right on cue, though, with that summery feeling weather coming on in late May. Yeah, I haven't been hearing too much people, too many people complain about the weather lately. So I think I think we're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> you can't complain about the heat yet this time of the year, especially with how low the humidity has been. And I do uh, expect over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking a whole lot more about your summer weather as we really get into the swing of summer feeling conditions. That, that'll do it, though, for this week's uh, weekly weather hangout. We appreciate you joining us. If it's YouTube, go ahead and maybe share that link, get that word out there. Or if it's w 2 11 Plus, we certainly hope you're enjoying that as well. We appreciate you. Being along for the ride and we'll see you next week.